we kind of feel like all those late night TV shows that are shooting episodes from their home and their apartments in New York City and Los Angeles because of their quarantine. Well, we're kind of quarantined too at the Lake Superior Railroad Museum, closed to the public but open to you through these special videos. And today we've got a special topic for you. Up until now we've talked about how to move trains. We've shown you steam locomotives, we've shown you huge diesel electric locomotives, and that's all about getting the train going. Today we're going to talk about how to stop one. Every train has got a brake system. Now today, those brakes are controlled by air from the cab of the locomotive. But back in the day, there wasn't such a thing as a pneumatic air brake. Mr. Westinghouse hadn't gotten around to inventing it yet. So how would you take the brake shoe, which you see down here, push it against the wheel to stop the train? Somebody had to do that on each and every car. I'll show you. Without a centralized way to apply all the brakes uniformly along the whole train at the same time, you had to stop each car individually. And that took somebody on each car to stop it individually. Now, of course, not only had Mr. Westinghouse not invented the air brake yet, but uh, Mr. McCoring hadn't even invented the radio yet. So, how did they do that? They would listen. The engineer would blow a signal on the whistle that would tell the brakeman in each car to come out and using a handbrake crank it down until the car came to a stop. Another signal from the whistle, and there you go. The brakes are released, the train speeds up. Every car had its own brake and its own brakeman. But what if the brake handle wasn't here where they could get at it on a passenger car? What if it was up there? On a freight train with boxcars, the handle is up there. So it stands to reason that the brakeman has to be up there too. Again, on a whistleblow signal from the cab of the locomotive, the brakeman would be scrambling atop the cars, and one from the caboose and one from the engine cab would run towards each other, tightening the handbrakes along the way until the train slowed down. And then when it was time to speed up again, they'd reverse it, taking their position in the cab or in the caboose. But what happens now if you're speeding along at 35, 45 miles an hour, the engineer is blowing on the whistle, screaming for you to put those brakes on and you're running towards each other, one brakeman from the cab and one brakeman from the caboose, on top of the car, jumping from car to car, and you are the brakeman from the engine. So your back is to the engine going this way. Now what happens when you come to a tunnel or a bridge? How do you know? The telltale tells you. A simple cheap solution was the telltale. These hanging ropes would warn a brakeman that the train was approaching an obstruction, like a bridge, a trestle, or a tunnel. Told the brakeman to lie down flat on top of the car as it sped through the tunnel. The alternative, of course, was not good. In 1926, the railroads finally got around to standardizing the telltale distance from the obstruction so that the brakeman would get an idea of just how fast they had to hit the deck, so to speak. In a speeding freight train out on the main line, it was anywhere between 100 and 300 feet. An obstruction in the yard where trains move slower, it was only 50 to 100 feet that the telltale had to be in front of whatever it is that made you want to duck. Eventually, George Westinghouse invented the air brake. And that's a pneumatic brake that applies equal pressure all along the train on each individual brake shoe that pushes it against each individual wheel on each individual car. And it's all controlled by the cab and the locomotive engineer who has one lever that applies the brakes because as you can see all these cars are connected with air hoses hence the pneumatic air brake one application of the air brake handle and all the brakes on the train stop you don't need brakemen and you really don't need telltales anymore so you would think with an obsolete telltale that they're just a part of history well maybe not think about it the next time you go to the drive through at McDonald's Look up above and see if there's not a telltale there to tell you that your car or camper or truck might be a little too tall for the overhang at the takeout window. And once again, if you work it hard enough, it all comes back to the railroad. It all comes back to you taking care of each other. Remember what you need to do. By now you know what it is. I'm just asking you please to do it while we take care of each other.